All right, this is 49 Nine Sock brought to you by Big O Tires. Jennifer Lee Chan on assignment, so sitting in for her, Alex Smith. Actually, <laughs> Jennifer's not on assignment. That's why she's not here. I'm on assignment. I'm Rough here. assignment, Matt. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm glad and, you jumped on this one. And you know what? Yeah. This is your debut on 49 Nine Sock. I think it is. Yes. I think I've ducked you for quite a while. Yeah, so. and finally, yep. here at the Ameri good. American Century yep. Championship, I, yep. I wrangled you. I like curried favor with your family to get you over here. Well, I pulled pulled you away. That's a from good. Them. It was a good strategy. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Forty Nine Stock. You you should be on Forty Nine Stock. Eight seasons. Yep. Uh, with the Forty ers sixteen total. Yep. In and the living NFL. back in the Bay Area now, so kids are diehard Niner fans, and obviously catch a lot of games. And so. yeah, tell me about that. Why why are your kids Forty Nine fans? Well, so it's. I mean, it's been really interesting. Like my kids were so little. My second child was born basically right before I got traded to Kansas City. Um, and they were so young, they never really remember me playing for the Niners. You know, obviously they they know about it, um, but they knew Kansas City and then obviously later Washington. But we always knew we wanted to come back to the Bay Area. My wife's from the Bay Area. That was, we love it. So we always knew we wanted to come back. And this has been our second year back. And like any young kids on the playground, like all their buddies, I mean, it's, and it's how, 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 how could you not like the Niners? You know, and obviously they've been so good. And so, They've become fast Niner fans, um, along with all the other uh, Bay Area sports teams. So it's been fun. And obviously for me now transitioning, you know, off the field into, you know, whatever I'm doing, whatever this is next. I don't want to call it retirement, but trying to figure it out. And so it's been fun in that role and kind of an alumni, if that's what you want to call it, of, of the Niners and kind of to, to kind of reengage in that regard. So it's been really, it's been really neat to be honest. Yeah. So yeah. now you're part of the, the alumni. You're being yeah, brought I am. in, you're doing yes. events with the 49ers. I've done some. Yeah. It's yeah. been really, it's been, I mean, obviously I, mean, I was 20 years old when I got drafted. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the eight formidable years that changed my life and relationships that, that I cherish and will cherish for the rest of my life. Um, and so, yeah, and it's been great. Obviously I, I went on and, you know, played in Kansas city and Washington and come back and just, uh, it's just, I've had time to reflect on everything, you mm -hmm. know, and, and really digest it. And, and again, really grateful for all of it, you know, the good and the bad, certainly the, yeah. those, the love, the rough lean years early, but you know, I've, I've, I'm 39 and, uh, you know, I've, I've known, I've known New York's almost half my life. Yeah. You know, I was 20 when I got drafted, wow. you know, and a lot of the relationships, you know, BY, like one of the first guys I met, um, you know, it, it, Guy McIntyre, like these guys, I've, I've known them for literally almost half yeah. my life. And and uh, so it's been really cool to come back and, again, kind of take that in and, yeah, move I, forward and, you know, in retirement, I guess. Yeah. I, you know, I, I like to get your perspective on this because you, you kind of alluded to it. They weren't all great times with the yeah, 49ers. No. And you were the number one pick in the draft. I always felt like you were an a really popular guy with the fan base. There was that one game, the yep. uh, the We Want Car game. Yeah. But other than that, I felt like the fans really embraced you. Uh, what's your perspective on that? Oh, I, I I think I I love and respect loyal fans. And so to think back on what the first five years of my career were and how – we, we were not very good, Matt. Yeah. You know, like it was it was dysfunctional. There weren't a lot of wins. So it's hard. Like You how, had one or two or three or yeah, four or five little, or seven offensive coordinators. Yes, <laughs> yes. But that aside, from the fans' perspective, the product on the field wasn't good, um, wasn't consistent, was, and certainly is not the bar that the Niners have set throughout history and certainly even to present day. So uh, they should have been. There should have been some, some angry fans and certainly mm -hmm. demanding better. Um, and I think we all, certainly in hindsight, yeah, like that, that's, that's to be expected. Uh -huh. um, I think when, you know, you're so young and I, I, again, it was such a learning experience for me. I put so much pressure. I was trying so hard to be perfect and to be the franchise quarterback and I didn't want to make a mistake. And in a lot of ways, I think that even worked against me. Um, and I had to work through that, those kind of expectations and dealing with that. But um, I think I needed it. But yeah, I, I can't tell you how much love I've gotten and uh, and have always gotten from the 49er faithful like uh -huh. I, again it's a relationship that I am um, so proud of and thankful for because it wasn't always good Matt, and you yeah. were there for that like you were there for all those years it was rough uh, for a long time and for them to stick with me and to, and again for it's a place that I call home and and to still kind of feel that that love and support has been absolutely amazing because um, not not everybody gets that 
it's mm -hmm. it's that it's that rare to like to, to get the chance to work through that and to come out the other side uh it's, it's just in professional sports it doesn't happen that often and so you are back in the bay area will you be out of training camp at all do you I, do you, do you hang around do you see kyle shanahan or john yeah, lynch do you... I, I i've seen them um you know john is a san diego guy uh so he and i go way back i actually got to play against him um but yeah so i've also one of the you know one of my things that i'm doing now uh since i've stopped playing is i, I you know i've worked for espn the last couple of years and and as an analyst and uh and so in, and I've enjoyed that. And obviously, Kyle Shanahan is a guy that I never got to play for, but I've played with so many guys that have played with him, so many teammates that, that, that I've picked their brains and other coaches that have been with them. And I'm such a fan of his, um, not only from an X's and O's perspective, but just like the, the culture he brings and sets. And I love what he's done, he and John Lynch, uh, and what they've built. And I think it's so su sustainable, uh -huh. you know, the way they've built it. And so it's so much fun to watch. It's kind of a throwback style of football, especially today uh, with the run game, the play action pass, the misdirection. I just think it's it's uh, the way they do it is, is so much fun. It's so fun as a fan. And so, again, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to come down um, during training camp and, and catch a few practices. Again, it's, it's when you get away from it, you miss it. You need to be around it a little bit, even from a spectator standpoint. So... Hopefully I can finagle my way in. Yeah. Do you have uh, passes? I, I maybe I can work on that yeah. for you. I don't know. It might be a, we a, can trade a tough call. Interview. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned you're an analyst for ESPN. Yep. So put on your analyst hat for yeah. a second. What the heck is going on with Fortnite's quarterback situation? Yeah. I, you know what? It's fine. I told you this early. I, I secretly really kind of like it. Uh -huh. um, uh, listen, they went through four quarterbacks last year. I mean, obviously Trey. They moved up in the draft and got, and we're hoping to hand over the keys to him. He gets injured, you know, and and. And thankfully, the, the, the amazing move they made last year to keep Jimmy when everybody assumed they'd get rid of him. Uh -huh. And they were able to make that work and make it work not only to keep him, but to, to make it functional. Everybody was getting along. Everybody was on the same page. And then obviously he, he goes down and you've, you've got Brock Purdy uh, sitting there uh, who you've hit with the last pick in the draft. And to see what he did was, was unbelievable. Um, and obviously we all know what, what happened in the NFC Championship game. I'm not going to go into that. But, but going to fast forward into this year, I... I love. Obviously, you've got you've got Trey and Brock coming back, two young, really talented guys with bright future, um, and and I think to add a guy like Sam Darnold, who uh, a little bit I see I see some similarities certainly to what I went through um, as a young guy. You know, well, yeah, he certainly he, he, he bounced around a little bit, but yeah. he's had a ton of coaching change. He's never really had you know a great cast. I feel like he's carried a lot of weight as a young player. He tried to do too much, and he's an incredibly talented kid. And I think now you're going into a system where you just got to be the point guard. For the 49ers, right? Just run the offense. If, if they the, throw the check down to Christian McCaffrey, throw the check uh, down. I mean, that's a pretty good option, right? Yeah. You throw the dump to, to Kittle, like, and everything in between. And there, there's just so many weapons. And I don't think for the first time you know, he's going to feel that pressure that he's got to do too much. He can just go operate. Do you know Sam Darnold? I know all those guys. Uh, okay. Of, of, you know, varying levels. Has that ever uh, been talked to, like what you went through in comparison? I haven't to talked to him in that regard because I hate comparing yeah. and I don't want to even put that on him. Yeah. I just obviously, have, I'm supportive of all those guys. Um, I feel like, you know, having played and been there and, you know, you've been in those shoes, you certainly, they're all, they're all trying to do their best, right? They've all got their own journey that they're going on. Um, and I love, certainly in the media, I'm a part of it now. We love to pit them against each other, uh -huh. right? But the, the, the the true reality is that's not the case, right? Brock Purdy's going down his journey. Certainly he got his elbow deal that he's rehabbing now and trying to come back from, but he's trying to be the best quarterback he can be. Trey Lance, no different, right? Sam Darnold, no different. And those those guys, that doesn't conflict. They can all get along right. and do it. Um, and actually, competition can bring out the best in all I, of them. I mean, I, I think you know this, that not all quarterbacks' rooms are the same. And yep. there are some guys in the league uh, who might try to undermine the guy ahead of him on the depth Absolutely. chart or the guy behind him on the depth chart. So how can the 49ers make this work with Trey Lance, with Brock Purdy, with Sam Darnold, not to mention Brandon Allen, who's been the number two with the Bengals the last yeah. three years? How? What, tell me about that dynamic, and is it, is it a recipe for disaster, or what's the key to making that situation work? It can be. It can be. But it doesn't have to be. And, and I think certainly starts with the guy at the top, Kyle. And, and we've seen him do it before. I mean, I think his communication, the transparency, all those guys, everybody knows what's going on. Um, and I think they appreciate being there, right? Like, th this is a – it's a great opportunity to be in that room. Um, you know, your opportunity may not come on opening day. It may. 
Um, but, you know, look at last year. Four guys played. Yeah. It, it, there's a chance it's, it's coming. And, and your job is to be ready whenever, that, whenever your number is called. And it's a great opportunity to go out there in a great system with great players around you uh, to, to really show what you can do. And that needs to be those guys' mentality. And, again, I do think that starts, obviously, with Kyle at the top. And, and he's, he's shown that he, he, can, he can do that, right, that, yeah. that there can be. I've been a part of some great quarterback rooms. You know, I, I get too much credit oftentimes for mentoring, you know, a young kid named Patrick Mahomes. And, and Whatever happened to that guy. Yeah, and, and it's no different, right, with, with Andy. It was just we all knew the deal and we were on the same page, and there was a mutual respect between everybody, and uh, it, it, it can work. So Trey Lance, they traded up to get him spend a lot of capital to yeah. go up there and they pick him number three and he was a starter to open last season but you know if Brock Purdy gets healthy stays healthy and plays like they expect him to he may never get another yep. shot so how do you put that in perspective is it a is, is it a red check mark uh, next to Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch's name for drafting him there like how do you just kind of sort that out yeah I'm I mean it's hard to get into that I think if you if you were to say that, hey, listen, you know, if we were just grading draft picks, and and if you were to play it out, and he doesn't, and it's because Brock Purdy does, like, you've also hit on a, the last pick of the draft, which nobody yeah. else has to that level. I I, I I I still love Trey's future. I think he's incredibly talented. I think he's a great kid that works really hard, um, and and I think he's got. I, I mean, he was so young. He was 20 years old when he got drafted. Yeah. His his college experience was so unique. Um, you know, he's battled some injuries. So for him, I mean, I, he needs to block out the noise, block out the distractions and continue to go to work and just be, you know, become the player he wants to be right. and work towards that. And that's hard. That's not, that's not easy to do, especially uh -huh. as a young kid, um, you know, and, and so, but both those guys. So I, I, I again, I, I told you this, I, I, I really like the QB room. I, I, you know, I know it's not getting a ton of attention around the league on a national level, but I, I think they're sitting in a great place. I think all those guys can play. And if it's anything like last year, they may need them all to play. Yeah. And uh, I, not every team has that luxury. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I do think that depth uh, really can be a weapon for them. So you mentioned Brock Purdy and it just, what, what did he, can you put in perspective what he did last season yeah. and, and how he has set himself up, you know, for the future? Yeah. You know, we love to, we love to get caught up in the combine and kind of the underwear Olympics and all the measurables, you know, height, weight, speed, hand size, arm strength, how far can he throw it and how many miles per hour does he throw it and all that stuff. Like in the end, quarterbacking, you know, certainly you have, there's a level of accuracy. You know, you got to be able to throw on time and hit your targets, but it's really processing. It's really between your ears. You've got to be able to process a lot fast. And there's not a, there's not a great way to quantify that yet, right? I mean, there's in our interview process and the combine and there's all the – weird tests you take there's not a they haven't really found a great way to quantify that and I think Brock showed he's got it right between the ears like it's not too big for him and, this and is a guy that, this, that immediately I mean this is a guy I know I know didn't get many reps in training camp yeah. um you know finally got backed up to number two so he's running scout team you're still not getting many reps and then to step in and just operate the way he did uh it wasn't too big you could see him dial in and I know in that system there's a lot on the quarterback's plate from a processing standpoint and I think he showed enough that absolutely he's got it and again height 40 arm strength like that that stuff really is secondary yeah. at, at the NFL level and I think he's got the things that you're looking for um to win sustainably and again accuracy timing and processing number one how would you have done in the Kyle Shanahan system <laughs> I, I it's a thing it's a, a thing I would love to think I love to think about sometimes because uh -huh. it is so it's one of the best systems for a quarterback in the league period and um, why, why why is it? I just think that again it you just have to be I love the analogy you just you're just the point guard you just the, the way the way it's built and put together with the run game with the play action pass with the misdirection and screens uh, you, you never feel like you have to do too much. Certainly, there are a few plays a game that you're going to be expected to make, but there's also a lot of there's a lot of a lot of freebies, a lot of gimmies uh -huh. out there for you. And then you look at right now, like they're just the playmakers everywhere. I mean, at every position, um, there's somebody that can really that can really do a lot with the ball in their hands. Uh -huh. And so that's such a that's such a nice place to be as a quarterback, yeah. knowing you don't have to force the ball anywhere and you just go out there and run the system. Where's the defense telling me where to throw it? throw it there on time and let them do the work and let the offense work for you. Um, and that's not, that, again, that's, not, it's not everywhere. Yeah. And so uh, it would be, it would be a great place to play. I'm, I'm definitely, uh, would have loved to uh, been in those quarterback rooms as a player and, and kind of, I think, soaked up that knowledge. If you were 
entering the league, say, whatever, maybe 10 years later, do you think you would have been you know, a read option, uh, dual threat I kind mean, of guy? That's certainly something that I think when I'm left to analyze my, like the timing – my career and there's just so much timing i mean certainly i was fortunate when i came out when i did i've had great coaches i got you know throughout my career even in college that that led to that to being a, the number one pick but yeah when i got drafted there certainly was this big stigma that i played in a gimmicky offense in college that i played in the shotgun that that wasn't going to work at the nfl level qb runs wouldn't work um and i certainly took a lot on that it proved that i could play under center with a fullback and a two tight ends and i had to do that to prove that i could be a pro style quarterback uh, you know, over the kind of the eight to ten years, first eight to ten years of my career, that certainly changed a lot. And and guys, you know, Cam, Russell, guys that really helped move the needle in that regard. That you could you could play you could play wide open. You could put the ball in the quarterback's hands. That it could be sustainable. You could pick your moments um, to to run effectively as a quarterback. And that wasn't, you know, for me certainly when Harbaugh came back. That that was something that, that I finally felt comfortable utilizing again. It was a strength of mine for so long that I felt like yeah. I kind of didn't want to rely on because I almost felt like, oh, I got to be this pocket guy. Uh-huh. I got to be this pro-style quarterback. But uh, it was nice certainly to, you know, at that point the rest of my career that it was something that I could take pride in and use as often as I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the you know, you, you mentioned the, all the injuries the four years have had at, at quarterback and, you know, Trey Lance is a guy dual threat. It, is it... And then we see the, the change from Trey Lance to Brock Purdy, who's more of a, 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 a pocket passer, uh, a point guard, as you mentioned. Do you sense that, like, Kyle's philosophy on what the quarterback position is has kind of gone back to where it had been? You know, it seemed like Trey Lance was the, the shiny toy yeah. that, hey, play 11-on-11 11 11 football, yeah. but maybe Kyle's – Going back to what he knows best, I think it's it's all dependent upon, and I don't want, I'm not going to speak for Kyle, but I would think he would tell you, listen, if if Brock's under the center, I'm going to call the plays that put Brock in the best position yeah. to succeed, and if Trey's under center, I'm going to put Trey in the best chance to succeed, and certainly Trey's athleticism and ability to run the football uh, should should be there on your yeah. play calling sheet, right? Third and three, like, let's at least let's use him or fake mm-hmm. it, or you know, I know I would want that. Um, and so, and, and no different with Sam, like whatever his strengths are, certainly as the coach and play caller, that's your job is to put the 11 guys out there in the best possible situation. And certainly the quarterback who's got the ball in his hands every play is going to carry a lot of weight there. Um, so, yeah, and, and again, I do think that's the beauty of Kyle, that, that this isn't just a system um, that, that he can change and, um, you know, adapt depending on his player's talent. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, uh, again, the uh, NFL analyst hat on. What, what do you envision for the 49ers this season? Oh, I, I, I mean, mean, sky's the limit. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, this time of year, everybody's talking about Super Bowls and playoffs, and it, it's so easy. You know, for them to get back to the NFC Championship game is hard. That's so much work that goes into that, yeah. and so many things that have to go right. Um, so it's hard to get back to. So I, I think this idea that you're just going to match, they'll be back there is also not, that's not realistic. Uh, you got to win your division. Uh, that's, I mean, that's the, the clearest path to get yeah. into the dance. Uh, now we do. There are two more wild cards, so it's a little easier if you don't. Uh, but it certainly it starts there, and I think that's a very obviously very achievable uh, for them. It's not easy, but achievable. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, and, and so I, I, you know, again, a lot of things got you got to stay healthy, uh, timing and things with your schedule got to play into that. But uh, I think it starts there. And again, I, 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 that's that's the expectation I know for them, and certainly that. It, for me as an outsider app uh-huh. for him. So. Okay, so uh, you're 39? Is that what 39. You're 39 yep. years old. How are you feeling health-wise? I'm doing good, physically? thanks. Yeah, incredibly lucky. Lucky to be here playing golf. I chase my kids around. I go skiing and mountain biking. Do you really? Do whatever. You know, I, Man, I, I don't really have... don't feel like there's anything I can't do at this point, which uh, there was a long time I, I, I never thought I'd say those words. So, yeah, yeah I'm really lucky. When you look at your leg, what what do you think? Like, how often yeah. do you just look so, at your leg? Yeah, and... so it's uh, – not as much anymore because it's it, you know for me it's my normal. Um, but there were a lot of you know certainly years when I was very ashamed of my leg. So for yeah. me to be wearing shorts yeah. out in public at a public event wasn't something that I would have even thought to entertain, and I was ashamed of it. And I was kind of ashamed because it it really represented all my limitations, the things that I wouldn't be able to do. You know when I, when they were still talking about amputating it, and wow. I didn't know what my future would look like. Uh, certainly now it's it's not pretty uh, by any means, but it certainly for me it represents. 
all the things I can go do. Huh. You know, it's it's obviously been through a lot and incredibly resilient. But again, it's uh, I don't feel like there's something I can't go go do and adapt and figure out. What what are your kids? What are your kids think of your leg? <laughs> that's a great question. You probably have to ask them. I think uh -huh. they think of it as pretty normal. Okay. You know, I think they think if you break your leg, that's what happens. So I don't know how healthy that is, but <laughs> yeah, they, uh, I, it's, it's for them. It, it doesn't phase them at this point either. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that, that's uh, what a journey you, yes. you've been. I mean, yeah. that was, uh, and it continues to be, uh, inspiring to a lot of people. I'm sure you hear from a lot I, of people. I do. And I'm, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, I don't take that for granted. I know when I was going in, you know, and I was certainly had my dark moments of, uh, certainly depression and self doubt, uh, throughout my recovery. And I know what kind of those seeds of hope and people out there that reached out or people that provided inspiration for me, I know what it meant. And so to kind of be a link in that chain going forward for anybody else out there going through it, uh, certainly I, I, again, I, that's, it's the way it should be. We, you know, we need to be there for one another. And again, so if I can, I can be that at all for somebody that, that, that's going through it right now, um, I'm, I'm happy to, would love to. Awesome. Yeah. Alex, thank you so much. Yeah, I, man. I, Thanks, man. I'll try to uh, get you into the yeah, we'll training again. camp. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I'm going to hold you to that. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Alex Smith. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>